Today's video is about recovering from problems. About two years ago, this tree managed to shear itself off in a massive thunderstorm. And this spring, I managed to break the handles on a pair of secateurs. Now, it's the right time of year to prune your stone fruit, your plums, your damsons, your gauges, your cherries. So today I'm gonna to do that, and we're also gonna talk about how to choose a good pair of secateurs. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. Welcome to the orchard and welcome to pruning stone fruit and choosing secateurs. About two years ago, we had a summer thunderstorm of, you know, apocalyptic proportions. The rain was coming down in stair rods. The lightning was everywhere, the sheet and fork lightning. The thunder was just like making the windows rattle. And this tree, sheared off under the massive winds at about that height and crashed across the electric fence. The chickens were terrified. They were kind of hunkered down, getting absolutely soaked. And Fiona and I were in wet weather gear, scooping up chickens, putting them back into the coops. The noise you just heard is an alarm call from a chicken who's just seen a bird of prey going over. So once we dealt with the chickens, we had most of this tree lying across the fence. So we sawed it off and the plan being, look, we'll just deal with it when the weather's better. And I, in my mind, probably had the idea that we would dig out the stump and what was left. But when we looked at it, when I cut it off, when I cut it off to this height, we realized that we had a good 18 inches above the graft and it might just spring back. So we left the tree and blow me down, it has, but we do have to prune it back into a bowl shape and it'll always make almost a slightly low kind of wine glass and not the normal length of stem we would want but it's got a good established root structure it's a beautiful tree it's an opal plum and they are just fantastic so we've decided to let it go now with stone fruit which are members of the plum family so things like plums damsons gauges cherries etc when they're mature, you need to prune them in the summer. When they're young, you can get away with sort of March time prunings for the first two or three years. But after that, you kind of need to prune them in the summer because pruning them in winter lets in things like bacterial canker, which manifests itself as great gobbets of sap running down the tree, and silver leaf, both of which can weaken the tree quite considerably. So summer pruning, order of the day. In order to do that, I need some secateurs, and as I mentioned earlier, I literally broke a pair of secateurs pruning earlier this year. So I had to get a new pair of secateurs. So next, let's talk about what to look for in secateurs for pruning. Now, the first thing I want to do is explain the different types of secateurs and which ones that I will recommend for the job in hand. Now, important to say, the lovely people at Sengreen wrote to me recently and said, would you like to try a pair of our secateurs? I think they'd heard of my tail of woes literally shearing the handle off a pair of secateurs. There's no expectation of a review or any positive endorsements or anything silly like that. But it's important to say, I didn't pay for them. They were a gift from the lovely people at Sengreen. Came in a nice box, which I guess is useful for a gift if you want to give a pair. But what's more important is the secateurs inside. And I'm going to use these to illustrate bypass secateurs. The other type of secateurs are anvil secateurs. So first things first, let's explain the difference. So these are bypass secateurs. What does that mean? Well, what it means is that the blades bypass each other. They cross over like scissors in the cutting motion and these are by far the best secateurs to use on green living woods so when you're pruning the twigs out of trees you really want bypass secateurs these are anvil secateurs they only have one blade and then a flat so-called anvil underneath that the blade cuts down onto Really, anvil secateurs are best for using on dry and dead wood. Something like the old canes in the fruit cage are ideal for using anvil secateurs. But if you try and use them to cut green wood, you will tend to crush and splinter what you're cutting. So honestly, if you're only going to have one pair of secateurs, definitely get bypass secateurs, not anvil secateurs. 
I'm going to cut this stem with anvil secateurs. And look, I squeezed as hard as I could. The stem has not cut cleanly. It's left a bit of the outer sort of bark there that will tear given the opportunity. That's not what you want in pruning. You want nice, clean cuts. Let's see what happens when we do that with bypass secateurs. Coming in with the bypass secateurs from Sengreen. Neat cut, neat cut, neat cut, neat cut. That's what you want when you're pruning. That's the difference. Bypass secateurs cut much more cleanly on living wood. Now, there are a few other things that I would look for when selecting a pair of bypass secateurs for pruning. Let me quickly show you those, because I think they're important. First thing I consider really important in a pair of secateurs is having some sort of catch like this to hold them closed. When you're pruning, you're gonna be up and down ladders, you're gonna be holding branches with your other hand, and inevitably, you're gonna end up shoving your secateurs into a pocket or into a pouch on your belt to hold them while you move around. You don't want them open because the risk of injuring yourself on the blades is huge. So having some sort of catch to hold them shut is really useful. But I don't like this one. Let me show you why. If you imagine that they're in a safe position, I've just pulled them out of a pocket or a belt pouch and I'm gonna start pruning. So I've got, with this hand, I'm holding a branch and I'm gonna prune with this hand. How do I? easily take that catch off. I can just about do it by sort of stretching my little finger down but putting it back on again one-handed oh, it's a right game. The location and type of that catch are not what I want in a set of secateurs. This is the kind of safety catch I like so I've got secateurs in my hand I can just release that catch and they're open. If I finish with them close them with my hand shut that and I can put them back in a pocket or a belt. That is so convenient. If you're pruning a whole orchard, you honestly don't want to be messing about with these things. So that kind of catch, I really, really like. Let me show you something I do like on these secateurs. I don't know if you can actually see that where my index finger or now my thumb is, but that is a soft, spongy, almost like a shock absorber in the handles. And that's really important because when you're cutting through something and you're really kind of putting force on it, eventually it will slam through and the secateurs will snap shut. That causes hand shock. It causes your hand to jar. It's not a problem when you use them once. But if you make 40 or 50 cuts on 20 or 30 trees and you've got no kind of shock absorption in your secateurs, your hands are going to hurt at the end of it. So having you know, a soft grip is really important on your secateurs. Let me show you the bypass secateurs because they incorporate something else, which I think is really good. Now the Sengreen bypass secateurs work differently. They do have a good grip so that it's kind of, you know, if your hands are a bit wet or what have you, your hands aren't gonna slide, but it's not that shock absorbing because their shock absorbing is different. I'm gonna encourage you to look at this little black lump here and there's a corresponding black flat area on the other handle. Now if I close the blades, look at the end of the blade, you can see they haven't finished closing, but the black lump has touched the flat area. And that black lump is soft, so as the blades finish their travel it squishes and it slowly breaks the blade to a halt rather than having it slam to a halt at the end of travel. And that massively reduces hand shock. It's a feature I really like. That's enough about secateurs. I think we've covered that subject well. I'm going to prune this opal plum now and I want to prune it into a wine glass shape. They often call it a goblet shape. So a ring of branches in an inverted cone with a hollow centre so the air and pollinating insects can get in. I learnt to prune reading this book. It's the Royal Horticultural Society book by a guy called Christopher Brickle on pruning. This one is so old it is long out of print but there's an updated version and I'm going to put a link in the description down below. The RHS books by Christopher Brickle on pruning are superb. They are absolutely loaded with drawings of 
where to make your cuts, when to make your cuts, what to do with apples, what to do with pears, what to do with plums. Honestly, everything you need to know about pruning is in an RHS pruning garden. If you're going to have an orchard, honestly, it's an investment well worth making. Anyway, let's have a go at pruning this tree into that wine glass goblet shape. So my first cuts are going to be to eliminate any branches that are filling this sort of bowl of the tree in the middle. Branches like this one that are growing towards the centre of the bowl from the outside, there's no place for them. Branches that cross or touch, again, we want a nice open framework, so we don't want that. So what we've created here is a nice open bowl. And that's great, the sunlight and the air and the pollinating insects can get inside that bowl and do their work. And we don't get the branches rubbing against each other and everything getting dark and kind of mouldy and unpleasant inside. Next thing to look at is the end of these main leader branches. With our lovely bowl shape created, we need to look at these main branches. Now, we've got a problem here. Look at these two, this one and this one. Now down here, they're great. We've got two little branches like that, but as they grow, they go further and further apart as the bowl gets higher and higher and higher. And then you just get great big gaps like this, where there's no branch, which means no flower, which means no fruit. So what we need to have happen is as the branch comes up, it needs to divide at a certain point. So we may have sort of four to five branches down here, but eight to 10 branches up here, and then maybe 16 to 20 towards the top of the tree so that the space is fully filled in. So let's have a look at how we do that. This is a main branch of the tree. And here I cut that branch off last year and you can see that I've got three branches sort of coming out like that. One that's coming this way to fill in this gap, one that's going that way to fill in the gap the other side, and one that's coming out over the garden. Well I don't want that one. I also don't want some of these that again are just looking a little bit raggedy and that one again going in the wrong direction. So that one now has two branches. I've got the division I wanted to fill in the gaps and it will do just what I want it to do. So that branch now nicely pruned with a single division going where I want it to. This branch, it does divide, but way up there. And that's too far and that's causing this big gap. So what do I do about it? Well, this branch divides there. I'm going to take this branch just above a leaf stem and remove all that tall bit. That will now divide, and next year I can prune in a couple of branches to fill in that gap. This branch has gone almost horizontal. It's come all the way out to here, far further than I want the tree to spread. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a nice upright branch. This one I think is a little bit too close to the one beside it, but this one is ideal. I am gonna take off the end of the branch. I'm gonna let that go upright. So what the branch will do is come along and then curve up like that. When pruning, you do have to be aware of the trip hazards and chickens really liked felled foliage. This branch is in the wrong place. It's basically growing up the middle of where I want that goblet shape to be. I left it last year because honestly, you only want to take a bit at a time. You don't want to prune out all of a tree or it's got nothing to photosynthesize with. You've taken all the leaves. But this year, it's got to go. It's also too big for secateurs. And honestly, don't try and make your secateurs do a job that they're not up to, because you will break them or blunt them. So I'm going to use a pruning saw, a small foldable saw. This one's called the Silky Pocket Boy. And Silky make the best pruning saws I've ever come across. Professional arborists use them. They really are superb. So we'll take that branch out with a pruning saw. <laughs> That's all I'm going to do to the opal plum this year. What we've we done? Well, we've opened up that lovely bowl shape in the middle, removing any branches that are growing into the centre. 
We've also cut down any tall spindly branches that haven't forked to a height where we want them to divide to branch out and fill in the air gaps. And we've pruned out any crossing or touching branches to give a nice open straight canopy to the tree. Now, I don't like over pruning stone fruit because stone fruit, fruits and flowers on older wood. And if you keep pruning out most of your wood, you prevent it forming the very wood that will give you a good crop. But because this one suffered so dramatically in the thunderstorm, we're going to have to spend a few years knowing that we're sacrificing the fruit to get it back to a good state. But we shouldn't write it off. If we put in a young tree, we'd be doing the same pruning again. And this tree can still last 50 years or more and produce a lovely crop for generations to come. I've enjoyed the Sangreen Secateurs. My hand has no pain at all. There's no hand chop from it. It's cut cleanly and cut well. So I'll continue to use them. And I'll put a link to them and the pruning book and the silky saw down in the description below into our Amazon shops. So if you need any of those tools, you know where to find them. If you've enjoyed today's video, can you spare us five seconds? Give us a thumbs up down below. If you'd like to see more on tools or more on pruning, just tell us in the comments. And we'll make those videos for you. And if you want to watch those videos and everything else that we do just whack on that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to the channel hit the bell next to it you'll hear every time we upload a new video whatever you do come back and see us soon take care